eat your day. Oh, we'll 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 eat your day. Worship 
again I want to use this opportunity to welcome everyone to our July special event. The theme is I am a blessing leveraging skill sets, your skill sets to build transgenerational wealth, transgenerational kingdom wealth. I want to apologize for the delay in starts. It's primarily because of the overflow, if that's the word to use, from the service. We cannot start until service ends, and also people are still coming in. So next, we're going to go straight into the announcement. And I want to really charge you all to be very attentive to what will be going on today. There is a lot of value that we look to add to each and every one of you. That's actually our only primary and our singular goal is to add value to everyone's life. So we are changing the program a little bit, the order of the program, to accommodate for everything that is going on today. There's a lot going on. So instead of having our announcement towards the end, We'll go ahead and have the announcement now, and then after the announcement, we'll flow straight into the program. And Bro Tolu will be taking us in the announcement. Let's give him a round of applause. Hallelujah. Please, everybody, you can be seated now. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, so I'm just going to quickly run us through the announcements for the month of July. Next slide, please. Thank you, sir. All right. So our monthly newsletter, the newsletter for the month of July was sent to your email. This newsletter is the main tool that we intend to use to communicate to everybody to about, to about everything that's happening in the Youth Alive Fellowship community. This is basically an avenue for us to communicate what's happening, what's going on, what's happening next, so you can stay in the loop of what we have going on. Um, if you did not receive the July newsletter, please, the QR code is on the screen. It's on the screen here. It's on the back screen as well, and I believe the ushers may have a paper that they can pass around as well for the QR code so you can get yourself registered. And I'll give you guys a second so you can scan it. Is everyone good? All right. All right, so if you guys have any powerful testimonies, if you have a birthday in August or any special achievement that you would like for us to all celebrate with you, you know, please kindly let us know. You can get it featured and celebrated in our next newsletter. Like I said, this is an avenue that we want to use to be able to communicate to everybody what's happening in the Youth Alive Fellowship community. So when you win, we all win. So share your testimonies with us, you know, so we'll be celebrating with you and rejoicing with you and giving glory to God, all right? And you can email those details to the email that's listed on the screen. That is yaf at winnerschapelmaryland.org. And once again, that QR code is, that, that's the same QR code from the last screen. Next slide, please. Thank you. All right. So one thing I just want to highlight about this um, QR code is that when you go to sign up, you can actually indicate 
any service unit that you want to join. If you're looking to serve in the Youth Alive Fellowship, whether this be uh, ushering, whether it's with the media, whether it's with the choir, whatever the case may be, if you're contemplating joining one of the service units, you can use the QR code as a form of doing so to indicate that uh, service unit that you want to join. Next slide, please. Thank you. All right. So on the screen right here is another QR code that will take you to our WhatsApp group chat. This is another avenue of communication we use to get information to everybody. So by being on the WhatsApp group chat, you'll automatically be in the loop of what's going on. It's not um, a group chat that we use to send nonsense and spam to your phone, but this is just how we like to, you know, keep everybody in the loop, communicate with, that, with them about future events so that you're, you know, in the loop with what's going on. All right, so good news. Can we give a clap for Jesus? So beginning with the August 2023 Congress, which is coming up the first Sunday of next month, the Youth Alive Fellowship will commence interaction-based Bible discussions on life-applicable youth-relevant topics. We shall be dedicating minimum 40 minutes to share and learn from each other and from the Word of God. As the Word says, iron sharpeneth iron. So this will be an opportunity for us to dive into the Word of God, be blessed as we hear the Word, and also, you know, uh, rub minds with one another and share our ideas and thoughts and continue to grow. And as mentioned, uh, the August Congress will be coming up soon. The date is August 6, 2023. Endeavor to come along with a friend, tell a friend, tell your neighbor, uh, tell other youths, tell other youths in the church, tell youths outside of the church, tell whoever to come. And I, I know as they come, they'll be blessed. Um, the time is 12.45 p.m. immediately after the second service, and it will be holding in the Faith Chapel per usual. All right, so... Our annual Youth Alive Fellowship picnic will be coming up July 29th. Can we give another clap round for Jesus? So this picnic, uh, just like last year, uh, will be coming together just for an opportunity for us to all get to know one another, uh, build our relationships with, with one another, build our network, and also an opportunity to network, have fun, play games, create meaningful connections, and you know just continue to grow with one another. When we're in uh, services like this, we have opportunities to communicate with one another, but you know, many of us, some stay for the first and the second service, some come from the second service, so you're in church for an extended period of time. This gives us the opportunity to be outside of church and, you know, communicate with one another, connect with one another, and foster deeper relationships with one another. And also, of course, there'll be food. I love to eat. I know many other here love food as well. So come, you know, bring your friends, bring family members, come, be blessed, have a good time. We're going to play games. We're going to connect with one another. And, of course, there's going to be delicious food as well. So I know that will, you know, entice somebody. So, you know, bring somebody and have a great time. The location is Ackerdale Park, um, and this is in uh, College Park. And the address is on the screen as well. And the time is from 12 to 6 p.m. All right. So we're finally announcing our Youth Alive Fellowship men's and women's groups. Um, we're pleased to announce that the launch of these men's and women's groups, uh, it is a platform for us to be able to facilitate and encourage gender-specific discussions. Once again, just like I spoke about for the picnic, um, there are opportunities for us through this men's and women's groups to be able to, once again, connect with people on a deeper level, uh, gender-wise, and also be able to rub minds. And like I said, iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. So. As we continue to connect with one another, I know we're just going to continue to blossom and grow as individuals and as a group as well. So this shall be a house-to-house -house fellowship, uh, which will feature movie nights, karaoke nights, and of course there'll be food, games, and lots of fun. Next slide, please. All right, thank you. And then all members with the house, backyard, or lounge that can hold 10 people or more are admonished to see Brother Jimmy or Brother James or Dr. Oyedepo. Brother James is right there uh, with the brown suit. If you could wave your hand for me, please, sir. Yes, sir, you see, that's him right there. And I don't see Brother Jimmy here, but he's probably gonna come back in at some point. Um, so yeah, please speak to them if you um, are able to provide a venue for us to be able to fellowship with one another and gather. So the times will be um, the last Fridays of every month at 7 p.m., but more details will come as uh, we continue to set these plans in order. And WhatsApp groups have been created for each men and women's platform. And if you scan the QR code, you'll be able to be taken directly there. Uh, go back one second. Uh, did everybody get the QR code? All right. I think we're good. Thank you. All right. So good news. Can we have another clap hand for Jesus? 
So our IAC 2023 has been reannounced, and it shall be a one-week camp-style event. This will hold from Tuesday, August 22nd to Saturday, August 26th. The location is in West Virginia, so stay tuned. We'll be sending out the registration link. Um, it's going to be an awesome time. We'll be able to fan the fire and continue to build ourselves up spiritually and once again continue to build deeper and more meaningful connections with one another. So our outreach t-shirts our outreach t-shirts are now ready for your order. Um, these t-shirts are a way that we can promote oneness when we're going out for our outreaches and going out for evangelism so that when people see us, they know that we're a unit. So everyone is strongly encouraged to order one before the upcoming picnic. These are some of the options that we have. There is a polo style t-shirt and then there's a regular um, round neck t-shirt option as well on the next slide. So to place your order, you can kindly just text this number right here, and then I believe the method of payment will be through Zelle, and then you can indicate your name, size, and preferred color, and they'll get you set up. So are there any first timers in our midst? I would like to kindly appreciate you guys. Any first timers in our midst? Any first timers in our midst? You can go to the next slide, please. Thank you, sir. No first timers? All right, well, I thank you guys. Uh, Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. So we're going to go straight into the I'm trying to bring up this on my iPad here. We're going to go straight now into the workshop. Um, I want to use this time now to invite all our panelists to come up to the stage. All our panelists, let's please give them a round of applause as they come up. And as they come up, I have... Uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, please go ahead. Once again, our apologies for the delay in the start of uh, the program today. And we are making adjustments as we go along to accommodate uh, for, for the delay. So I want to just introduce to you our panelists for today. I'm going to be going through their um, uh, bio briefly. The Lord has tremendously blessed us with talents, ministers in marketplaces. And one of the things that we seek to do here is to be able to bring the blessings, the values, the talents that the Lord has blessed us with to use it to add value to your life. I said it before and I will continue to say it again. We have only one mission, only one goal here. And that is to see you blossom, to see you prosper, and to see you thrive in life. The scripture says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. And that's exactly what the Lord has given us this platform to do, that we will be prosperous both in our spirit, in our body, in our working place, in our families. So please, please, please pay very close attention to everything that will be shared. They are designed for you. And I pray that the Lord himself will help you to pick up one or two things today in Jesus' name. Our first panelist that I'm going to be introducing to us, she is not here with us in person, but she has sent us pre-recorded video that we'll be sharing with you as the program goes along. Her name is Karen Akinwande, Sister Karen Akinwande. Sister Karen Akinwande, and just for you to know who we are talking about, the picture should be up on the screen. She is, and she is the entrepreneur, the owner, and CEO of Latio Design Closets, and currently serves in the United States Army as a combat medic health care specialist. 
Before opening her own company, Latio Design Closet, she occupied the position of program manager at the American College of Preventative Medicine, where she managed and executed multiple preventative medicine projects with competing priorities to implement policies and system changes. Sister Karen is a dynamic, result-oriented Sister Karen is a dynamic, result-focused leader with experience in developing innovative programs and integrative strategy, managing and communicating ideas to achieve measurable outcomes. She earned a Master's of Science degree in Health Informatics Administration Management at the University of Maryland Global Campus and a Master's in Cancer Studies and in Molecular Biology from the University of Leicester, UK. Sister Karen lives in Glen Burnie, Maryland with her husband and loves hiking, playing basketball, and organizing. Let's give her a round of applause once again for agreeing to be a part of this program. Next, I will be introducing to you Sister Serum Angel Akor Akoroda. My apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly. <laughs> Sister Serum is a result-driven solutions manager with a passion for problem solving. She has a bachelor's degree in microbiology and an MBA and is a chartered banker. Sister Sirom has over nine years of work experience across corporate banking, sales and business development, strategy, program management, and performance management. As an entrepreneur, she has run businesses in fashion, beauty, wellness, business, education. She is a published author, a financial coach, she loves reading, fitness, and skydiving. And I requested if she would be gracious enough to bring a book. I'm not sure if she was able to. Oh, great. She has it. Great. Awesome. Let's please give her a round of applause for agreeing to be with us today. And next, we are having Deacon Kaya Defuora, who will be joining us shortly. The Kinkara de Fora is an IT professional with over 14 years in the networking, infrastructure, and security management field. He started his entrepreneurial journey in 2017, forming the first company with a friend, and now has his own company called Softwork LLC. Softwork, yeah, go ahead. I think someone is like, yeah. Amen. Softwork is a faith-based general IT contractor that designs and installs network, security, and communication infrastructure, which provide our clients best practice solutions unique to their data, voice, video, and security needs. The journey started as an intrapreneur, which we'll get to learn more about, to entrepreneurship and continues to grow as an entrepreneur. Let's give him a round of applause once again. Next, I'm going to be introducing to you Sister Duni Olusegun. <laughs> Sister Duni migrated to the U.S. in 2008 and immediately enrolled into college to prepare for law school career. In 2012, after earning a bachelor's degree, from IUPUI in Indiana, Annapolis. Sister Duny worked briefly as a customer service representative at Walmart. Customer service representative at Walmart. Let me keep reading so you can see where she is now. And the highlight there is it doesn't matter where you are now, God is taking you places in the name of Jesus Christ. Our goal was to become a lawyer. In between studying to take her LSAT exam, she came across an opportunity with American Income Life 
and decided to become an American income life business owner in the Global Life American Income Division. And she did this because of her strong work ethic, her competitiveness, and her desire to lead in a serving capacity. Sister Duny wanted to empower others to achieve the kind of success that she has, which is why she graciously accepted our invitation to be here today, and we are grateful for her. Sister Duny takes tremendous pride in her achievements with American Income Live. Since joining the company in 2012, she has been a two times million dollar producer a top master general agent in category seven. Yeah, go ahead. That clap is for Jesus. Amen and amen. A top producer in 2020 and 2021. In 2021, our goal was to become the top female producer of all time in the entire American life franchises. It was one of the most difficult tasks but she was determined to accomplish that. In 70 years, there has never been a black woman, most importantly, any Nigerian to achieve this. The most reward, yeah, go ahead, please go ahead. The most rewarding aspect of joining American life has been a career growth our ability to train and develop new representatives and protect family with outstanding life insurance products, which provide comfort, security, and help to lessen the fear of what the future holds. And lastly, in 2022, Sister Duny was promoted to a state general agent in the state of Maryland. This is one of the highest position in American Income Life. Once again, let's give a round of applause for Jesus for this outstanding achievement. And last but not the least, I want to introduce to you Sister Yvonne Tezem. <laughs> Sister Yvonne is an award-winning product business growth strategist to powerhouse female entrepreneurs. She is an entrepreneur with over two decades experience growing multiple six-figure businesses and consulting. She generated $750,000 in annual sales in one of her businesses by empowering other women. She spent 15 years teaching over 5,000 women in the USA, the UK, and Canada and Africa and how to build their businesses through sales, marketing, and team building strategy. Sister Yvonne is the founder and CEO of the Monetizer Academy, where she serves as a product brand strategy, helping powerhouse female entrepreneurs to launch and scale six-figure product-based businesses and increase sales with ease. She is also the founder and owner of Emanuela Cosmetics, a luxury non-toxic non skincare brand with a global ambassador, with a global brand ambassador distribution program, which is featured as number one glow serum in, in Vogue magazine. Sister Yvonne is a certified business coach, international speaker, business strategist, consultant, and mentor. Sister Yvonne earned a degree in business management and law and public policy from the University of Maryland, as well as a legal certificate from George Washington University. Sister Yvonne holds a weekly live session through our Facebook business page called Mondays with Yvonne Tanzem. This is where she shares business tips and strategies, followed by an open Q&A. In her spare time, she enjoys playing tennis, traveling, dancing, comedy, and quiet time at home with her family. Let's give Sister Yvonne a round of applause once again.
So I'm just going to join them here. I'm not going to sit in the middle. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay, I would like to sit on the edge. So we're just going to go straight into having our panelists tell us a little bit more about themselves. I've already read uh, their, their bio to you all, but I did not cover every single thing that they have accomplished. So they are just going to share their journey into entrepreneurship, and um, each of them will also be discussing some assigned topics that we had uh, given to them to help us to, uh, to cover. So first, I want to start with Sister Sirom Akorede, and she will be talking to us about knowing your why, the importance of starting with your purpose. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, my name is Serume Akoroda, um, Nigerian, proudly. <laughs> so um, I just have about, um, I think, five minutes. So I'm just going to like quickly run through um, why you need to have a why in, <laughs> why you need to have a why in, you know, starting or running a business. Um, so my story is kind of different because I still have a regular job. Um, and I'm someone who was like wanting to, you know, climb the, the corporate ladder and all of that before maybe at some point later stepping away to do my own thing. So I have always had like side hustles. Um, and I'll say my side hustling started when I was in college when um, I was, you know, staying in the girls' hostel. And I saw that it was so tiring for people to walk down all the way from the hostels to the common room to go buy like, you know, stuff like eggs, you know, milk, things like that. So I was like, okay, I'll save you the stress. I'll buy these things in bulk. And whenever I want to buy it, you just come to my room and take it from me. So that was like my, <laughs> my idea, you know, like a small business that I had started. But I think from that time, it kind of like just got really interesting to me um, how business works. But I'll say one thing. For a long time, when I was doing like a lot of like side hustles, small businesses here and there, it was all a matter of, oh, I need to make extra money on the side. I don't want to just, you know, depend on my salary. I want to have, you know, something that I like to do that's, you know, separate from like, you know, like your regular job and all of that. Um, so it was more of, okay, I, I buy this for 100, I sell this for 200. But I could not really say that there was a purpose to the businesses that I was doing. I mean, I liked them, so I'll, I'll you know, maybe I'll, I'll give an example. Um, this was like, during, still during the pandemic, uh, that was in 2021, I was looking for how to raise money to buy my airplane ticket to come to the US. And then, <laughs> and then I discovered, I, so a friend of mine called me, a former colleague, she wanted me to make gift boxes for a client. So I went to the market that was in Lagos Island then. And while I was there, I discovered a product called a waffle maker. It was a mini waffle maker. So I took it. I was like, okay, let me see if this will, you know, maybe sell or something. I tried it. People liked it. Their kids loved it. And I sold 60 pieces of that waffle maker in less than two weeks. And I was able to use that money to, you know, <laughs> complete my uh, plane ticket. And, you know, I got here. So it was for me like, okay. Yes, I've made money from this, but what next? Like, you know, what's, what's the purpose to everything? And I did not get that clarity until I discovered my purpose as a person on earth. So, and I had given a testimony on this before, the, the happiness I got when I discovered my purpose. Now, let me give an example. So part of my purpose is giving gladness for morning. It's a very, it's a long purpose, but I'll just take a, a little part. Giving gladness for morning and giving beauty for ashes. And so it's like, since, that, since I know that that's my personal purpose, anything that I do, either my regular job or having a business, uh, how many minutes do I have left? Okay. <laughs> I just want to be sure that I'm not, you know. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna do this like wrap up in two minutes. Okay, so in my personal work, in my business, I, it keeps ringing in my head. 
give people gladness for mourning, exchange beauty for ashes. And that was part of the reasons that led me to write my first book. Um, and I wrote this because I came here to do my MBA. And so um, my MBA journey was an eight year journey. I wrote my GMAT first eight years ago and then it took me a while for God to bring me here. So I was like, okay, let me write about the journey. And it was like people who, stuff that would take people 10 years, I wanted this book to be able to maybe take them one year, six months, you know, shorten the time. So that's what, that's gladness for money, right? And then God brought me to the next level, which was financial coaching. And it was, when you say gladness for money, if you give people resources, does that make them glad or make them mourn? It makes them glad, right? So in that way, it's like I'm also tying to my purpose as well. And so I would say, um, apart from just having like a side hustle to make money and all of that, aligning with the purpose that God had for me, and like I keep repeating, part of it, there's still like a huge part, is as I do any business now, the one thing I keep telling God is this, God, how do I give people gladness for mourning? How do I exchange beauty for ashes in anybody? And that has led me to like the, the place where I would say God really wants me to be, which is financial coaching. And just helping people walk through how do you save your money? How do you invest your money? How do you set up your 401k? How do you set up your, your Roth IRA? Should you do a traditional, should you do this or do that? You know, if you even want to do a mortgage, how do you do that? How do you save money? Because trust me, the kingdom needs wealth. And I'm not here to keep collecting from the, I need to give to, to the kingdom. It is better to give than to receive, right? But if you don't have resources, how do you give? And so it's like, in doing that, I, 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 just, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, it, it, just, it was like I just settled into the place that God wanted me to be. And for now, that's where it is, right? But I don't know, like, you know, where God is going to expand it to. And I'm still watching because if you know the boundaries, if you know how far your purpose is going to get you, then that's not your purpose. Your purpose is something that you can't even measure. You can't say, oh, it's going to be 100 inches. Oh, it's going to be 10 kilometers. It's not possible. Your purpose is way bigger than you and you need God to do it. So it says in, it says in, um, it says in the Bible, many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. And he also says, not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. So one thing I'll say is this, whatever business you want to do, whatever you want to step into, remember that you must align with God's purpose. And the next step is this, pray to God. Take out some time, have a personal retreat, and say, God, please reveal my purpose to me so that I don't just, you know, sway back and forth. Let me know my purpose and open doors for me to fulfill the purpose on earth. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sister Sirom. Next, we will have Deacon Kaya de Opora to talk to us about knowing yourself, the importance of self-reflection before choosing your path and he will also be sharing with us the different pathways that are available in the realm of entrepreneurship. Thank you so much, um, Dr. James. Um, just to, I think that question, I would like to answer it from my personal you know, journey. Um, like I said, I mean, like the right <laughs> um, that was read out, started in 2017, um, but before I actually go to that part, um, one thing that I, you know, was able to understand about myself is what I'm able to do um, in my current career. IT professional going to over 14 years now into network engineering management and, you know, managing people, managing networks and all of that. So I know what I am able to do myself. You know, so it's just like every single one of us, wherever we are working right now, Whatever they are paying you for, they are paying you because you are good at what you do. And that is why you are filling that position. Now, let me take a step back. Before I started, you know, I wanted to, you know, start something. I wanted to get into business. Um, and, you know, two things, intrapreneurship and entrepreneurship, they are two separate things. Now, I started from being an entrepreneur. 
And what that means is where I am working with whatever that I'm being paid for, I am looking at the value that I'm able to add to the organization and make myself almost indispensable. That is, if I don't show up to work one day, everyone is going to feel it that this person is not around. Yes, we know that, you know, all of that is fixed. You know, someone covers for you or um, all of those things. But the way I work and the effort that I put in in all that I do, I make it hard for the position to be filled. Um, and this is because I know what I, uh, you know, what I, you know, what I do. I know how to do it best, at least to my own best, you know, personal understanding. So, so, so what, I, what, I, what I bring to the table is you will find it almost indispensable to take this person away. So now this is how I started. Um, within the organization, the ideas that I bring in, all of the things that I put into play are things that, you know, helps the continue to, you know, the com I mean, the company to, to, you know, achieve certain things that are not usual. So that makes me stand out. And whenever the directors or the, you know, senior leaders are thinking about things, they are thinking about me in all of their ideas and some of the things that they want to do. You know, so whatever um, um, strategies and all those things that comes into play, I'm always factored in with my ideas and what I bring to the table. Now, I wanted to stand out and do my own thing because I know that I, I know how to do these certain things. So I, uh, um, I spoke to the director of one of the companies that I, you know, that I worked. I said, you know, because I wanted them to actually, you know, I, I worked for one year and I wanted them to take me as full time, but they said, you know, they don't have the pay, they are unable to um, keep me there because of my pay and all of that. So I left the organization. But the director said, you know, because of what you do, when you start up something, let me know so that I can, you know, bring you in, you know, to help us. So 2017, the opportunity came. I left and, you know, I started a company with a friend. And then, you know, I just set up, I did all of that, the research online, how to set up your company, the type of tax, you know, you have, you must have, you know, for a small, you know, company and all of that. So I did that and I sent an, an email to the, um, to the director and said, hey, um, I have already set up something, please let me know when you have a project. And believe you, she sent a reply and said, we have three projects that I want you to pick up immediately. Now, that ties back to what I was able to do while I was working for them. And this was how the door opened for me. I could tell you, I mean, for example, if you live in this county and you use the library, my hand is on their network. Um, that's the privilege that God brought through what I did there. So this is how I started. And knowing and identifying what you are able to do and you are good at, something has to stand you out within the organization that you are in. So when you step out, you are, even if it's not an organization that takes, you know, small biz, uh, businesses or organi um, uh, small businesses or medium organizations to work with them, there is always something that your, the, your, the person you report to will always reach out to you for, for help. And they, you know, through connection could, you know, open doors for you, like my own case with what I had. So now, looking at what we have, you, you want to become an entrepreneur because I, I chose to go that path. I still have my nine to five. Let me, you know, I have to be sincere about that. I have my nine to five. But that also made me to decide that I want to start working 100% remote because I know what I do. I do it best. So with being 100% remote, I'm able to manage my time and support my own company when I have to. Most of the time I do after business hours to go because again, I, my, my line of work, you know, I don't have to do things during business hours. I could go in there after business hours. So again, being able to manage my time, being able to look at what I have in front of me and manage that and you know, to start growing my own, you know, organization as it is. So now entrepreneurship comes with a whole lot of things. I believe the people that we have here that have already stepped into this, they are going to share more. But it comes with you saying that, yes, I want to take the risk and start growing this thing myself. Entrepreneurship is different because you are winning the organization. The organization is taking the risk. You don't have to worry about where's the money going to come from, where's the next project going to come from, because you are working as a staff. You are only bringing your value. But entrepreneurship you are taking everything. 
You are thinking about where's the next project coming from. You are thinking about, you know, your taxes is part of it. Everything that comes at the end of the year. Everything that comes with entrepreneurship says that you are the one. And it's a lot of hard work. You know, different from when you are an entrepreneur where you, you know, support things from within. That risk is taken away from you. When you're an entrepreneur, you take care of all of those risks. Now, I would just, you know, you know, you know, concluding because of time, say that for each one and every one of us here, you have one unique gifting. If you are a business analyst, for example, and there's another, or you have five business analysts within your organization, something stands you out out of those five people. And that is what you want to always bring to the table because this is what is going to change you from being just every day nine to five to start thinking about owning your own business and doing something, taking opportunities. The customers that you even work with outside the organization, if your organization is the type that work with other you know, organizations, you, your, your, your networking with them, your relationship with them, because you build all those things while you are still within the confines of a different organization where you're working. So you have to start looking at what can I bring to the table? What stands me out? So when you are able to pull out with that confidence is what you now start using to start exploring and going out there to begin to do what God has destined for you to do. I could tell you one of the scriptures that God, you know, gave me was um, Exodus chapter 4 verse 2. What is in your hand? When Moses wanted to go out, what do you have in your hands? So what do I have in my hands? I know what I'm able to do. I know what I'm able to bring to the table. And that is what I'm trading with. And that is what I'm still trading with. So for each and every one of us here, that is what I want you to think about as we're having this conversation. That what do I have in my hands and what, I, what can I bring to the table? I pray God to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Next, we're going to have Sister Yvonne, is it Tanzem or Tezem? Yes, I can get it for you. And she's going to be discussing mindsets that fosters business success. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me well? Okay. So um, I don't want to talk too much about myself. I really want to um, you guys to walk away with like tangible things you can implement right away. Um, so who in the room is already an entrepreneur? We have two. Okay, so we have a lot of people here. Oh, five. Okay, so we have what I'll call a lot of visionaries, right? Okay, so, um, you know, there are all types of entrepreneurs. You know, there's business owners, there's entrepreneurs, then there's kingdom entrepreneurs, right? So I believe what we're here to do is to build kingdom entrepreneurs, right? Awesome. So that's what I love to do. And also, you know, um, I am an out-of-the-box thinker type of person, you know. So I believe whatever you, you're doing, do it well. Um, and if you're going to do something, why not maximize it, right? I always say the amount of effort it takes to sell a Toyota and what it takes to sell a Bentley is the same type of effort, right or wrong? Right? So if you can sell Bentleys, wouldn't you rather sell Bentleys and make Bentleys commission than make Toyota commission? That's what I'm talking about, right? So I teach my clients how to launch six-figure businesses. So that's what we're about to talk about today. Is that okay? All right, let's get this started. All right, so um, in my years of experience, I've learned that there are three components to launching a kingdom um, business, right? To obtain kingdom wealth. The first one, um, and I don't want to preach, <laughs> we've had enough preaching, um, comes from Proverbs 11.24, right? Which speaks about um, scattering versus holding, right? So if you're committed to being a kingdom entrepreneur, operating in the, in the area of six figures and millions, you have to master how to give, number one. Put that down, give, right? All right. Secondly, you cannot be lazy. You cannot be lazy, right? Everything we have, our gifts, our abilities, our resources, everything, our money, God gave it to us, right? We are just stewards. We all came into this earth with nothing, right? So therefore, you have to be willing to give in order to operate in a higher realm as a kingdom entrepreneur. First one. Second one, 
you cannot, yes, you cannot be lazy, right? Proverbs 12, 24, you cannot be lazy. And also, you must run your business with integrity, okay? And then the third is you must be a problem solver, right? You do not become wealthy by wanting to make money, no. You become wealthy by solving problems, right? And the, um, um, the, the more important the problem you solve, and the more problems you can solve, the more money you are going to earn. Example, um, what's Mr. Amazon's name? Jeff Bezos, right? During pandemic, he became the most wealthy person on earth. And why is that? It's because during pandemic, we were all quarantining. And he had the ability to bring us everything we need, every physical item, groceries, etc. while we were um, in our homes, right? Being safe. So therefore, he solved a global problem, and on a huge level, therefore, he made so much money. So, um, you know, piggyback on what Dick and Kaede shared, start thinking about what problems you can solve, right? And also, even if there's someone else already solving or doing that thing, how can you adjust it? How can you do it better? See where they are dropping the ball, right? Let's say, example, someone is selling cookies. I'm gonna give you a tip. Go to Amazon, read, read reviews on what people, how the complaints people are making about cookies, right? And you do, and you fix that problem, right? That, you know, that makes you better than them, right? So that's an example, all right? So um, I have so much I wanna share with you guys. Um, so, um, my topic is on mindset, right? So, um, again, you don't become wealthy by seeking money, but learning how to solve problems. And know that only two percent of um, only two percent are in the pulpit. Ninety-eight percent is us in the marketplace. And as a nine-to-five worker, you're limited. You're limited. There's only so much money. You have a set salary. If you make two hundred thousand dollars a year, two hundred thousand dollars a year is all you make. But as an, as an entrepreneur, particularly a kingdom entrepreneur, anything can happen. You can have a half a million dollar deal like this, right? So I believe in entrepreneurship. And sometimes I meet people who say, Yvonne, well, you know, um, I'm afraid to step out there. Um, what if I don't make it? Guess what? What if you do, right? Because the truth is you can go to your job tomorrow and they say they have to let you go. In the USA, it's called at will employment right? The same way you can walk in and quit, you can walk in and they can let you go. So I believe in having a backup. I believe in having multiple streams of income, right? And to me, you know, we all have different mindsets. We have different levels of tolerance. I gain, I have comfort in knowing that I have the ability to generate my wealth. I don't have to depend on someone giving me crumbs because the truth is no owner of every of any company is going to structure their company in such a way where you are going to be you're going to make the most money. No. And of course because they're the ones who invested, they took the risk to start up the company, right? And sometimes also I find people who say, well, I just want to get all these degrees and get a job, right? And they're afraid of entrepreneurship. Now, who in here who in this room had a job waiting for them before they registered, they went to college and registered for their bachelor's? Did any of you guys have a job waiting for you? No, right? So, um, you know, it's, it's the same with entrepreneurship. It's a risk, it's a risk, right? So I'm gonna talk about some of the risks because I don't have a lot of time, I'm so sorry. All right, so the first thing as an entrepreneur is you have to unlearn and relearn. You have to unlearn and relearn, I mean, it's, it's very different from being a, um, um, an employee. It's a very different journey. Um, and you can truly build a business um, that is in alignment with your lifestyle. If you want a business where you want to pray, you can structure that into your business. When I open my events, we start with prayer. In corporate America, I couldn't pray, right? So I love that I get to design my life the way I want it. So I have two businesses. I have a skincare brand and I have um, and I have a company where I help clients to launch their businesses, right? 
And um, I've been in the beauty cosmetic industry now for like 18 years. I was a top producer for a major, actually the number one skincare brand in the world. I was amongst the top 2% of the top 2% of that company. You know, the pink Cadillac people, right? So um, I did ex extremely well. The company would fly me all over to travel. And the Lord spoke to me that he brought me to that company to train and prepare me for my own skincare business. So I stepped away from all that to do my own thing. A lot of people thought I was crazy, but you have to, you know, you have to be obedient, right? And I truly know that my death is not about, you get to a level as an entrepreneur where it's no longer about you. It's about those who the Lord has called you to serve. It's about giving back. Some of you in here, there are people who are tied to your destinies. Some of you have been called to be employers of labor, right? There are so many people that are connected to you. And that is part of one of my why, right? Is that knowing that there are other people tied to my destiny. So the days when I'm, I'm feeling so, so, don't want to do what I need to do, don't want to show up online, I get up at shore because it's not it's no longer about me but it's about others that God has called me to and a lesson I learned a couple of years ago is that guess what if you're in this room and the Lord has been speaking to you to launch a business launch a business launch a business let me tell you if you take too long to move he's going to give that vision to someone else he is going to give it to someone else. So you must be obedient. And all of you who are here, you're not here by just like um, some mistake. You're here for a reason. There's a reason why you're in this room. And my prayer is that there will be a shift in your mindset and you will step out and embrace. And let me tell you, um, 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 something I'm so guilty of was being a perfectionist, waiting for everything to be perfect before I step out in faith. One thing I learned is that when you step out in faith, God will meet you, okay? When you step out in faith, he will meet you. He will bring the right people into your life to give you exactly what you need. Um, I wasn't doing much online prior to the pandemic. I showed up online, and God is so good. He sent all kinds of people my way to help me with so many things I've learned about, like, you know, the, the, the um, techie, techie stuff. You know, I had to change my language. I used to be say, say I'm afraid of tech, but now, you know, I switched that language. I say I'm embracing technology, and he sends people into my path to show me what to do. So you do not need to know everything. If you're driving from here to New York, what do you do? You, you, you plug it into your GPS, right? Entrepreneurship is the same thing. You step out in faith, and you will see step by step by step the right people will come into your path to show you the way, right? All right. Um, so what else? So your destiny responds to your mindset. Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, right? You've got to be willing to renew your mindset, right? And then also, um, um, we're going to talk about fears. There are several kinds of fears. There's negative fear, right? There's negative fear. What is negative fear? That's a fear that brings up unpleasant emotions. You know, you're afraid, you have pain, you feel threatened, right? So... And, and it's okay. It's so important to acknowledge fear. It's okay. Fear is okay. You acknowledge it from, for what it is and you detach, right? There's also positive fear. For example, we have the fear of putting our hands over fire, right? That's a positive fear and it's okay. Positive fear protects us from danger, right? Now, I'm going to share some of the fears that is holding some people back from launching their business. One of the fears is fear of rejection, right? fear of rejection. And you know what? It doesn't matter. You have to start treating rejection as feedback, as feedback, right? Let's say, let's say, for example, I offer her a piece of gum and she says, no, thank you. Guess what? She didn't say no to me. She probably loves me. She said no to the gum. And it's okay, right? Maybe she doesn't like strawberry flavor gum. And as an, as an entrepreneur, that now tells me that I need to launch other flavors of gum besides strawberry. So, so it's okay. And also know that no means next, all right? No means next. So it doesn't matter, right? So another thing, too, that stops some of us is um, 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 failure, right? As an entrepreneur, you fail forward to, su to, to success, right? So let's say you try to go route number one and you fail. It's okay. That, you just learned that route number one is not the way to go. You now go to route number two. So once you embrace this and it happens, it's okay, right? And then there's also the fear of losing money. As an entrepreneur, you've got to shift. It's not about losing money, but it's about investing in your 
business, right? And through those investments, you learn and you grow, right? And then the next is support, right? You're afraid that, oh, who's going to help me? Who's going to help me? That's why you're here. You probably prayed the prayer about entrepreneurship. You know, our leader here has put together this program, and that's how it is. People will be coming into your space step by step to help you and teach you, right? So some other things is that you've got to love what you do, right? So you don't need to copycat, you know, dig deep inside, whatever it is, because a lot of times people feel that they have to go and learn something new to launch a business. No, God gave each and every one of us here gifts. There are gifts that we all have. Dig deep and turn that gift into a business, right? Monetize it, right? Warren Buffett, who here knows Warren Buffett, right? Okay, Warren Buffett was asked, what is the best investment, right? And his response was, the best investment is you. The investment you make in yourself is the best investment you can ever make because no one can ever take it away from you, right? As an entrepreneur, you've got to have a winning mindset. You've got to be willing to succeed. You cannot be controlled by the media, right? Stop buying things to impress people who you don't like and they don't like you, right? So that's very important. And if you're here as a nine to five worker, you're thinking about that entrepreneurship journey, start saving your money, work overtime as much as you can, cut down on your expenses, look and see what else you can use to make money. One of the things I did when I was trying to make that transition, I started renting rooms. I started renting rooms in my home, banking that money, banking it, banking it to build like a nice fat savings, right? There are grants, there's so many things. My clock is ticking, okay. So, um, yeah, so again, you've got to learn how to serve people. You've got to have clarity, right? You've got to have clarity and also um, um, faith, right? Faith, faith, faith. We've got to talk about faith. Hi, Dr. Faith. All right, yeah, so you've got to talk about faith, right? Faith is the most essential characteristics to be a successful entrepreneur, right? So um, you've got to learn how to feel fears and just dispose it, right? You know, um, set goals, um, be consistent, you know, don't focus too much on the outcome, but be consistent, just be consistent. For example, let's say you're wanting to learn how to bake cake, right? Don't stress about the cake being perfect. Be consistent in doing the right activities on a consistent basis. Um, because again, there are people who are tied to your, um, who, who, who are tied to you and connected to your legacy. So you have to get to a place where it's no longer about you, but it's about serving. You know, the greater of the, 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 the greater your service and the more you serve, the more impact you're going to make. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. That's a lot that she shared with us and I, I took quite a bit of notes. We'll follow up later. Um, at this time, Dickin uh, Fora has another meeting that she has, I mean, he has to be in, and we would like to release him. We are grateful. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. It's the Dickin board chair, so he's very busy. Thank you so much for coming. Um, while these introductions are going on, we are going to be going straight into Q&A after the um, panelists have spoken. So please have your questions ready. There will be mics ready on, on both sides of the building that will be available for you to ask any questions that you may have. The best value that the panelists can provide to us is to actually answer our questions. We know where we are stuck. We know the barriers, we know the challenges. So our panelists are here to support you. Whatever you are going through right now that is stopping you from launching, they've probably experienced it or know someone that have experienced it. So they can give you practical advice on what to do to address whatever challenges that you are having. So please have those questions ready. The technical Okay, it's right there on the screen. If you would prefer to just send in your question electronically, you can do so as well through the Slido link. We will get the question and the question will be read out. 
but you will also have the option to take the mic and ask your question in-house if uh, you prefer. So next, I want to hand over the mic to, let me bring up my program here. Um, I'm going to have Sister Juni to speak to us on top skills that you need to succeed as an entrepreneur. Hello. How is everyone doing today? Awesome, awesome. All right, so just a little bit story about myself. Um, in 2008 was when I came to the United States, first generation. You know, I was one of those, I think they ran lottery, the next lottery, then they canceled it all. So I was, you know, I came here and via lottery, I won, I, I won lottery. So, you know, I, I come from a family of five, um, my parents, uh, my dad was an engineer, so he's always worked his entire life. And he had a side hustle, you know, growing up. He worked Monday to Friday and Saturday and Sunday, you know, he'll do his side hustle, which was he, he had several rental properties that he ran. And then my mom was a stay-at-home mom. Imagine having five kids. <laughs> so she... Um, even from being a stay-at-home mom, she had several convenience stores. My mom was that person that, sell, that sold mineral, buff, buff, anything. She was also a seamstress. So just growing up, I learned so much from, from everything that they're doing, as, especially in these days, being an entrepreneur is it, really not optional anymore especially if, if you want to live above your debt, if you want to impact your family, if, if, if you want to make sure you set up your kids for future, 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 you know, promises. So that is one of the advantages that I got, just seeing um, my parents do that. And, you know, it's so funny, in 2003, something happened. We lived in Abuja, and somehow... They, they, you know, the, the ministry, the minister of Abuja came and demolished all the properties my dad had built. And then at the same time, his, his company laid him off. So we literally had to move from Abuja and go into and rent, rent an apartment. But I saw how my parents were able to pick back the pieces of their lives and kind of start all over again. My dad, just being a serial entrepreneur, helped him at that time. And, you know, in 2020, I saw the same thing happen to a lot of people when the pandemic came. You know, people were laid off from their job. They've, they've had security for, and people had no way, no way, you know, to, to survive. And that is why I do recommend every single person, you, you definitely need to start thinking about what if your nine to five job fails, what are you going to do? Don't wait until it does because sometimes it will. And so a couple of things that I learned from just, just kind of watching my parents run businesses, especially my mom, is um, failure is just an event. It's going to happen. You got to expect it. You know, uh, fail, fail fast, fail forward. Fail fast, fail forward. Don't be scared about it. And when I, when I graduated, and I was, I was thinking about doing something. Number one was owning a franchise because that's the best way you can really um, control your income. Number two was I wanted to run a real estate company just like my dad did. And when I was, you know, just graduated, about to study for my law school, I still want to have my nine to five job, which is going to be be a lawyer. Um, and I came across, I think it was God that just pushed me around that path because if you're from our part of the world, insurance is foreign to us. So I think I came across um, life insurance early age and um, that was in 2012. And there are three things that really made me stick with it. Number one is the low cost to start it up. You know, it's a lot of companies when you want to start it up, you, you need heavy capital to invest in that. And with insurance, I only needed $168 to get my license. That's it. Of course, I have my computer, so that really helped me to say, okay, this is going to be a low startup for me. Anyone can afford $168. If you can't, beg your neighbor. They'll give you one. 
So I started my journey there in 2012. I got my license and I started looking at the career path. And the second thing that pushed me into the insurance industry is you get to climb the corporate ladder as fast as you want. So one of the reasons why I left my previous employer, which was Walmart, was I wanted to own a Walmart store. And number one, Walmart doesn't promote women. I'm sure there's a lawsuit about that for them. Number two, you really have to wait until everyone else has been promoted. Who came before you? So the person that is waiting to own a store has been there 10 years. And I had no 10 years to wait around wanting a store. It's a store. So um, joining American Income Life, I saw the, the career path. And I saw that I could own my own agency as fast as I wanted. And that gave me that peace of mind that, okay, this is a place to be. Number three is insurance provide residual income. We know what passive income is. Everyone has heard about it, right? There are really two industries that have that. Number one is your entertainment industry. This is where your authors, musicians, you know, they'll do something like Michael Jackson songs. If you go to your iTunes store and download his song, his family's still going to get paid. They're called royalties, right? The insurance industry also offers that. So this is how it works. When you sell a policy to a client, as long as that client keeps their policy, the company owes you up to 6% of that premium that person pays every month. So, and I'm thinking about it, I said, okay, the best way to you know, get into this entrepreneurship is my first year, I wanna sell as much policies as I can so that in my second, third, fourth, five years, I've gained this residual income that will come in once a month regardless if I sold any other product. And we didn't see the benefit of this until 2020 when the pandemic hit and a lot of people were collecting unemployment and most people who work for our company, none of them could get on unemployment because once a month, the company is gonna sell, send them check for all the policies they've written before. So that really helped me to stay in that industry. And there are five skills that I know over the course of 10 years that I've really acquired at American Income. And I kind of want to share that with you all. And a lot of our speakers have really covered almost all of them. So <laughs> sorry, there, there is no secret to being successful or starting a business. Number one, uh, Sister Sarome, I think I said your name right. She said it. She said, you have to have your why. So when I came into the industry, one of my why was being the number one person that came uh, first generation in the United States. I know God told me, I'm bringing you here, not just for you. I'm bringing you here so you can bring other people. Okay? So when I came here, my why was I wanted us, uh, to, to make six figure as fast as possible so that when my parents and my siblings go through immigration, it, will be, it won't be a measure of, well, she can't afford to bring all of you. It will be as easy, uh, as easy for them. And to God be the glory, in, two, in 2018, four, uh, three of my siblings are here. My parents, both of them are here as well, just because I was able to sponsor as many of them that I can because of the income and, you know, the blessings from the company that I joined with earlier on. So, so, so having your why allows you to create a vision for yourself. Not, just, not, just having your why is not enough. It will allow you to create a vision for yourself. When you have a vision for where you're going, the how to get there becomes very easy. But when you don't have a vision, just imagine you get in your car. No GPS. You just started driving. Where are you going? You have no clue. Exactly. You're going to drive everywhere. You're not going to get anywhere. So that's what having your why does. Number two, find a mentor. There is someone who, is, who has gone where you wanted to go, and they can help you avoid all of the mistakes that, just, that will hold you back. So find a mentor. If, if, if you're the smartest person in your group, you're really in a cage. You're not in a circle if you're the smartest person. Um, I heard a quote that said, if you want to be a millionaire, surround yourself with five millionaires. At some point, you're going to be the sixth person. So find a mentor. There's somebody in that field that will help you. How do you find a mentor? Find someone who has achieved the same level of, uh, you know, success that you're looking for. When I joined American Income Life, you know, it wasn't a lot of Nigerians that were there, of course. Um, 
So I had to really go find people who I know own an agency, and I also learn from them. So when I go in the field and try to sell a policy and maybe a client refuses to buy, they'll give me an objection. I'll write that objection down, and I'll ask five of my mentors, how did you overcome this when you started? And they'll give me five ways of how I can overcome it, each one of them. And the next time I run into that objection, guess what I'm doing? Whatever they told me, that's what I'm doing. And guys, it works. So finding the right mentor is going to help you. Number three, you want to learn your product. You want to learn your product. Not just learn your product, learn the product of your competitors. I know mostly all uh, companies that sell the same products that we do, I know how to overcome. When I meet with someone that has a certain life insurance and they say, I have this, I will actually do a better job educating them on the policy that they have from another company than their agent. And guess what? They will prefer to go with me just because I know how that company works. So you definitely want to learn your product and learn how your product differs from other people. Um, number four, you want to plan. When you fail to plan, you automatically, as you know, you're going to, you, you automatically have planned to fail. You want to plan. How do you plan? Is a good detailed plan to execute just so that you're successful. And when you're planning, the first thing you want to do is you want to set up a schedule. Nothing happens by accident. Get a schedule. Every day I know what I'm going to face tomorrow, Monday. I know what I'm going to do on Tuesday. It's a detailed schedule that I operate on. All of my meetings are on a schedule. I know the first meeting I'm going to get into. I know the last meeting I'm going to attend. I know what we're going to talk about. I live by my schedule. Everything is scheduled for me. So that's the first thing you want to get when you're planning. Number two, on the planning, you want to operate a to-do list. Whatever you're going to accomplish, you have to write it down. You're going to forget. You're literally going to get into traffic and forget about everything you set out to do. But when you have a to-do list, it will guide you properly every day. So definitely get a to-do list. At the end of every night, I look at my to-do list. I see all the ones that I've checked off. And this, in, this actually gives me what we'll call endorphins. That creates momentum that the next day, I'm looking forward to the challenges of the next day because of what my to-do list does. Number three, under that, you want to prioritize. Not everything you want to do immediately. Absolutely not. Um, you want to prioritize. You know, this is a saying that uh, John Maxwell told, um, wrote in his book. You want to spend 80% of your time on your top 20% task. So, for example, it's easy for me. In my new task, I know I needed to do recruiting. Recruiting is when I bring in new people who said, okay, I want to navigate the insurance field. Number two, I need to train them. How do I train them in this new industry? Number three, I need to develop them. How do I move them from point A to point B? So 80% of my time is spent doing those three tasks daily. At any point in time, I know what my tasks are. And prioritizing your task means you're giving the right attention to the tasks that will actually help you move from one point to another in your career. So prioritizing, number four on that part is you want to execute your plan. Accomplishing your to-do list should really help you do this. If you have all of these ideas, but you do not execute one, you are just, it's called dreaming. You're just dreaming about it. You have to find a way to execute those plans that you put in place. And lastly, on the five tool, prepare yourself for adversity. Adversity is going to come. When I joined American Income Life, I, you know, I, you know, I was given, the company offers us resources to actually start, which is, which is one of the reasons why I joined them. They gave me the first 50 names they gave me, I think 40 of them told me no, right off the back. One of them said, most of them said, ma'am, I don't understand you. Are you speaking English? What are you talking about? I don't understand you. So a lot of them right off the back told me no, even over the phone. But I have to think about it. I said, they told me no over the phone. What if I went to their houses? I, I have their addresses. So I started going to their homes with their addresses. I said, okay, 
want to talk about life insurance, and I found out people are actually nicer in person, and people will welcome me into their home, and that is how I was able to survive. So overcoming adversity has to be part of your plan, especially if you want to be in a business. Being in business is not for the faint-hearted. I'm telling you, sometimes before you wake up, you've received 25 emails that will destroy your day. But if you expect it, you know, this is part of building a business. You're going to fail. You're going to meet with adversity. You expect it. You know it's going to come. So overcoming adversity are going to help you. And I'll leave you with this last thing. You know, you can come here and you get motivated. Motivation is only going to last you five minutes, literally. The one skill that will help you is you have to be disciplined to your goals. You're disciplined. You're committed to the goals that you want to accomplish. And you never give up. If you give up, you don't know what's on the other side. But if you keep pushing and you keep pushing, I remember struggling in my business for the first six months. I struggled and I struggled and I struggled. They actually had a bet in my office that I was going to quit. They had that bet going on. But every day I showed up, I told myself, I'm not going to quit this opportunity because if X, Y, and Z can do it, so can I. I can do it as well. And it, didn't, it took until six months into my career before I was able to even see any success. And I hang on to that. And every time adversity comes my way, the Lord always remind me, remember, six months in, you thought you were going to drown. I brought you out of it. So just trust me in this next phase of your life. So I want to, you know, encourage, you know, any one of you going into business. It's going to get tough. It's going to get hard. But just plan in your mind. Yeah, you're never going to quit. You're going to continue. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, next, we're going to hear from Sister Karen. Sister Karen is one of our panelists, but because she has a training that she has to be in, she's not able to attend in person, so she sent a, a pre-recorded uh, introduction and response. And also, in the interest of time, we will not be able to take as many questions as we had planned to take. Uh, our apologies for that. But we will take a few questions before we wrap up. So if we can have the technical team, please put up uh, Sister, Sister Karen's introduction. And while they, while they do that, I just wanted to uh, once again thank all the panelists uh, for just coming here to share their knowledge uh, with us. One thing that um, Sister Duny, you said that hit me, and I would like to follow up on, on at, at a little time, is you said that becoming a business owner or becoming an entrepreneur or taking control, having ownership of your own future is not an option anymore. That's powerful. Um, but we'll come back to that. Can we have Sister Karen's video? Amen. And while they get that up, okay, I think she's ready. or full-time basis other than your nine-to-five job? Do you have a gift or a talent and wonder whether you'll get paid for it? Do you wonder whether your skills are... Looks like we're having technical difficulties. Okay, while they get that ready, do we have any questions that we can begin to address? Any question from the audience? There's one person there. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Patience. Uh, my question is, um, uh, I, I launched my business in 
2021. And then um, I get so much excited about it. And which, uh, and then I got so much contract to work on and all that. But lately I find out that uh, I was having issue with my classes and I failed some of my classes as well. And so, um, and my business is, uh, I do decoration and house cleaning at the same time. So uh, early this year, when I find out that I'm having issue with my classes, so I decided to, because uh, I still work as a part-time, so I decided to put a pause. Because both my businesses, I, uh, nobody trained me. So it was just something that I see that uh, I just have the gift of doing. And I started doing it and resulting in so much stuff coming in, so much idea, started getting crazy about it. So, and when I talked to my elder sister, she told me to slow down and try to look for somebody that is already in the business. Let them train me, go after them. So, with uh, what I find out about my classes this year, I decided to put a pause and some, some of the decorators that I found on Google that I call, oh, can I rent this, rent that? I called them and I asked them, I was like, ma'am, please, uh, I need help. This is the idea and this is what I have done. I need someone to train me. I need someone to work with. A lot of people reject me, but as God we have it, I found a lady. Our church is right, like right next to, there's a church right next to this building here. And the lady asked me to come and meet with her. I meet with her. She told me, she said, I shouldn't worry. She said she's going to train me, and she's going to pour everything out from her to me, that I shouldn't worry about anything as long as I'm, I know I want to do this, and which I thank her for that. Now, my question now is this. After, what I, after, the, after the class that I failed this year, putting a pause on my business, uh, what I did now is that I started that. I said in a month, I will go to her. I will, I will follow her to any event, support her, help her do set up, do all that. So I don't, so that I don't forget what, what I have in me so, so that I keep on learning. But now my question is that I want, just want to ask that. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing putting my business on hold for now and trying to go finish my classes and as well try to follow people that already know more than me, like follow them out like twice weekend during the month and support them in the little way I could so that I didn't forget what I have up there. So that's my question. Thank you. I will leave it for any of the panelists to uh, pick up. So what I'm hearing is balance, right, between pursuing your business and also pursuing your education. And when there's a conflict, what do you do? Yeah, anyone, anyone can take it. Um, it's an interesting situation. So did, did you already have clients? Were you already operating in your business before? Uh, yes, ma'am. I have clients. Okay, so what's your reason for going to? I guess I, I guess would we'll call her what um, a mentor. What's what's your reason? If you were already operating in your business, it okay. was functioning. Mm -hmm. What's your reason for reaching out to this other person? For what reason? Uh, my reason is that um, no one trained me as a decorator and as an event planner. No one trained me. And as a house cleaner, or maybe like an office cleaner, no one trained me. This is just something uh, okay. that so, I know. So you started operating your business, and, and yeah. then you felt like you needed more training? Is that the reason why? Yes, because I, I, there was a contract that I got last year. Mm -hmm. uh, the person told me that I charged the person 1600 mm -hmm. I talked to my biological sister. She was like, how will you charge a 1000 600 for 120 guests and you know you j just you you need help you need this i want you to build the person this amount i was scared i pick up my phone and i call the client and i was like oh, okay um okay the money will be 2005 i need people to help me this and that 
okay. and the client did not say a word and he accepted so that's where i see that something is wrong i need somebody to help okay you know there's a difference between running a business and have and being skilled in something or even having a passion or an interest in something there's nothing like as wonderful as on the job training um i would always advise everyone if possible um you know work work with someone master your craft and then launch a business like one of the businesses i owned was a full service salon and spa and i remember one of my employees coming to me telling me that oh yvonne can i partner with you right and i told her no because at this point i'd invested like almost $100,000 in that business. I told her no. Behind my back, she started giving her info, collecting my client's information. And then she opened a, um, a, a salon, like across the street, just a few blocks down, right? And um, some of my clients went, that's what happens in that industry. But within eight months, she was shut down, right? So if you can be a, a fabulous stylist or whatever it is your gift is, but it takes a whole different skill set to run a business like I didn't go to cosmetology co cosmetology school I wasn't a cosmetologist but I know what it takes to run a business right so um, again you know you have to I guess dig deep inside and find out what is your vision for yourself right because there are many entrepreneurs who are thriving and they don't have a college um, degree right so it just depends like um, wh whatever you're majoring in school is it in alignment with the business that you're doing what 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 were you majoring all um, your classes nursing ah okay nursing and well um it depends you know that's a question that you have to answer i don't think any of us can make that decision for you because at times you need that money from your occupation to fund your business right you know so um yeah so that's a question that you're going to have to answer but another thing you have to do is again you know, like the, the whole billing thing is a mindset, right? You have to chart your worth when it comes to business. And let me tell you, in business, your people, you know, you've got the $10 clients, you got the $1,000 clients. So you have to ask yourself, who do you want to do business with, right? And the caliber of people that you want to do business with, you have to show up as that type of a business owner, right? And at times it takes, you know, some work to grow to that level. Um, um, from what I'm hearing, I think it would be great if you do work with someone, build yourself up and then launch, and then also learn that in that type of a business, you have to build a team. You know, you must build a team to execute all that and charge your worth. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, we will have time for just one more question. Like I said earlier, today, because of the anointing service, and also the graduation, the service, the main service ran over by a lot, which is what affected us, being able to start on time. But this subject of entrepreneurship is such a huge subject that I would get permission from our oversight pastor, who is also joining us. By the way, Pastor Sen is witches. He was assigned to take care of something in church at another location, which is why he's not able to come today. But we will get his blessing to be able to do this again. Hopefully, we can have our panelists come back to us. But even if we are not able to do this again, we are going to be having a coaching and mentorship program that Pastor has given us the directive to go ahead and launch. We have a coaching program for immigration. We have a coaching program for career. We have a coaching program for businesses. And our panelists that you have here, as you can see, we've not been able to tap from them as much as they have come to release. But we are believing God that they will be able to partner with us in the way of coaching and you will be able to connect with them. Any questions that you have, you'll be able to get it from them personally. And also, the video that we were not able to get from Sister Karen, we will make that available to you through our newsletter because she has some very powerful things uh, that she shared in that video. She actually addressed some of the 
uh, concern that our lady has. So we'll take one last question and then we'll wrap up. There's someone here. Will you raise your hand? Never mind. Any question? Any other question before we, we wrap up? Okay, on the screen. The question on the screen says, how can one identify what's in their hand? And, and or how can one find their passion if it's unknown? I think I'll give that to Sister Sirome because she had spoken to us briefly about this. Um, praise God. Yeah, so how do you identify what's in your hands? Um, the easiest way, the fastest way to identify what's in your hands is through the person who made you. And I know it sounds abstract, like, oh, is God going to come down and tell me this is what is in your hands? But even God, who made Moses, asked him, he said, what is in your hand? He said, it's a rod. Now, he said, do this. So he has created you. He has deposited a lot in you. I, I, I don't know what skill you have or what thing you're passionate about. But the truth is, you need to take some time out for soul searching. You need to take some time out to also pray. And it's two things. And you have to be realistic with yourself, okay? I cannot set up a daycare or a child care center because I do not have that patience. I cannot. So don't, don't even tell me to come and start that kind. I don't even want to get involved, please. Because if anybody just annoys me like this, <laughs> I'm not hot-tempered, by the way, but you know how kids can be. <laughs> so, but some people, they are so gifted with kids. And it's like, oh my God, kids just you know, gravitate to them and everything. That is what is in your hand. For some other people, it might be the fact that you're an extrovert. I'm an extrovert, and I was in the sales industry for about eight years. And that was one of the key things that really helped me. I could talk to anybody. I could meet with anybody. I don't care what your face looks like. I will come and tell you the business that I want to tell you and all of that. So that is doing some soul searching to see you know, what your personality looks like and then stuff that you know about. It could be baking, it could be cooking, it could be anything. I'll, I'll give an example. Chipotle, for example, is what? is like the Mexican fast food in the US, right? What if we had an African fast food? What if we had a Nigerian fast food? And you had branches everywhere, and it was the same structure. And you're in different malls. You like to cook. You organize yourself. And like she said, it's not just knowing what is in your hand. It's also knowing how to run a business. But the point is that you need to be able to take time out. You don't just, you're not just, sit, you're not just going out to party and you just discover what is in your hands. But funny enough, while you are going out to party, God can still show you something in the party. Say, ah, this thing is a problem here. Or this might be an opportunity. But you have to be sensitive in the spirit. And that's where the soul searching, the praying to God. Use Proverbs 3 verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. So just acknowledge him. Say, God, um, I think I'm good at this. I think I'm good at this. What do you think? You know, and he'll direct you. You will see how opportunities will open up. I'll give a quick personal example. Uh, the financial coaching thing that I do, I don't think I have ever been as excited about any business as, um, that I've done as I have been for this one. Just the opportunity to show people how to manage their resources. There are people who are making good money, but they are still living paycheck to paycheck because all sorts of rubbish are just getting deducted from your accounts every month. So it's like there's this feeling of, oh my God, I have this challenge in front of me. How do I help this person get to where they want to be? So keep praying, keep doing your soul searching, and you get there. And I also wanted to just mention to the sister who said she was doing nursing. Um, I don't know if your being in school is a requisite for you to remain in the country. I don't know if that's an issue, but um, if that is, then you have to learn how to, to manage that because um, when you do come in as an immigrant, you have to make sure that you are in status um, so that you know that doesn't affect you in the future. Thank you. Amen. Can we please give them a round of applause? Let's rise. Amen. Thank you so much for your patience, for taking this time uh, with us. I just want to read a few key takeaways. Uh, if you didn't hear anything, 
please walk away with this. Again, by God's grace, we would do our best to make this an ongoing uh, discussion. One key takeaway, if you can please stay, I have a gift for you guys from Pastor. It says, have a vision to take control of your life and pursue it aggressively. Have a vision to take control of your life and your financial future and pursue it aggressively. Next, choose a why that is beyond you. A why that has to do with adding value. Our sister shared how our, our primary goal was to make six figures. But it wasn't so that you can go and buy a house, buy a Tesla. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. But because she understands that she has a family behind him or behind her, destinies that are connected to her, she pursued that vision and it came to pass. And she shared with us how she was able to sponsor her own family to come here. That's her story. Yours may be different, but have a vision to be a blessing, to have value as you pursue this entrepreneurship journey. Next, and this also helped our lady here, you don't have to quit your job to be an entrepreneur. We've had stories of entrepreneurs, people that are making waves. As, as a matter of fact, there is a study out there when you ask entrepreneurs that are successful in business today, they attribute their success to the skills that they developed, the connections that they made while they were employees. That's what they attributed their success to. They can carry a day is here. He still has his job. He has his own business. He spoke to us about how his first contract came from his previous manager. So don't burn the bridge. Don't quit your job. If that's not where you are, take things one step at a time. Every time you wake up as you are going to work, have a mindset that one day I'm starting my own business. What skills can I learn from this job? What processes do they have that is helping them to thrive? You are going to need those processes, those skills as well. While you are still in the door, gather all those skills. Gather all those values because it will help you. And lastly, execute. Get that dream of your vision board. Execute. Go for it. Seek a mentor, seek guidance, and just execute. Don't worry about failing. Fail forward. I think we heard that so many times today. You, we, it will happen. So you might as well go ahead and start failing. Fail fast and fail forward. Those are the two things under this one. So I'm going to stop there. Um, and once again, let's just give a round of applause to our panelists for being with us. I wasn't able to follow up in the interest of time on what Sister Denise said. Starting your own business is no longer an option. I know why I wanted to follow up on that. I know why, but we don't have time. So <laughs> thank you so much for being with us. That's a gift from <laughs> Pastor. And this is for Sister Sunomi. We appreciate you for coming. And last but not the least, for Sister Olusha Gun. I have one as well for Sister Karen. Sister Karen is joining us live from our training session. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you. Let's go ahead and just begin to thank God for today. If you have learned anything, if you have learned anything, begin to bless the name of the Lord for what you have learned. The purpose of this workshop is to inspire action. It's to inspire action. Let's thank him for what the inspirations that we have received. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's put our hands together once again for our panelists as they take their seats.
Thank you so much once again for staying with us all this while. My children can't take it anymore. They are like about to. It's like, Daddy, now, let's go. Um, I just want to read this passage to you as to why we are paying a very detailed attention, and we are going to continue to focus on this subject for us as youth alive. Isaiah chapter 60 from verse... Let me read. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Isaiah chapter 60 from... I'm looking for the passage where it says that they shall build... They shall build the whole waste cities, the desolation of many generations. There's no way you can be able to do that, building whole waste cities, repairing generational bridges, sponsoring children to school, paying crusades, paying crusades to be done, advancing the kingdom of God, without what we are doing today. You cannot do it with a nine-to-five job, okay? I'm not able to find that passage, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to go ahead and close. For those who are not receiving our newsletter, um, there is, okay, there's a passage on the screen. It says, and they shall be of thee, and, and they that shall be of thee shall build the whole waste places. This is talking about the vision and the plan that God has for our lives. And this workshop is designed to help us to begin to pursue this vision. That's why we are doing this, and that's why we are going to continue to do this. It says that thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. So you are not going to be the first millionaire in your family. Through you, that door will be wide open for many more to come through that door. In the name of Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be called the repairer of bridges. I pray the Lord will interpret this to you as he designed it for you because it's different for everyone. What that bridge is, is different for me, is different for you. And lastly, it said that you and I shall be a restorer of paths to dwell in. That's God's vision for us. That's God's mandate for us. And my prayer is that each and every one of us, in the next 10 years or five years, you will look back at where you are today and you will not be able to believe how far the Lord has taken you as you engage what we are discussing today in Jesus' name. Once again, let's lift up our hands and just thank God for today. Let's thank him for his blessings. Let's thank him for the value that has been added. Let's thank him for the panelists. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. Thank you, technical team, for putting that scripture up. This brings us to the end of our, our, our workshop today. Thank you for coming. God bless you all in Jesus' name.